requested. Here is a short video with an example of optimization and related rates. Now you'll have to tell me how my audio is today because I just bought a brand new wireless mic and I'm using it for the first time. Super exciting. Okay, optimization. Now remember the goal here is we want to write an equation in terms of one variable and then we'll take the derivative of it. So you either want to find the maximum or the minimum and set it equal to zero. Okay? So we have been asked to design a one liter oil can shaped like a right cylinder. Okay, we're given a bunch of clues right now. First of all, since it's centimeters cubed, we know that the volume is a thousand centimeters cubed. Okay? And it's a right cylinder, so I'm going to draw my cylinder. Okay? And we know that volume formula is um, take the area of the base, pi r squared, times the height. So then we know that we have 1,000 is equal to pi r squared height. So that's just the given information. Now we want to find out what dimension, so we need to solve for radius and height, use the least material. So we want to find the least material is surface area. So this is the equation, surface area, that I want to write in terms of one variable. Well, what's surface area? Well, surface area, we have to take the area of the base and the, and the height. So we know that the area for a circle is pi r squared. So we're going to have 2 pi r squared. There's a top and a bottom. And then we have to find the area of this rectangular piece, right? Kind of like this, the part that goes around the cylinder. And so we know that this would be the height. And then this part here is basically the circumference of the circle which is 2 pi r, right? So the um, area of the lateral area would be 2 pi r times height, okay? So that's our formula for surface area. Now my goal is to rewrite this in terms of one variable and take the derivative and set it equal to, easy, equal to zero. Now, how am I gonna write it in terms of one variable? Well, I'm gonna go back to the given information and I'm gonna solve this equation for one of the variables. Now h is much easier to solve for than r. So 1,000 over pi r squared is equal to h. So I'm going to substitute that for h. 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r, and then h is 1,000 over pi r squared. So before I take the derivative, let's simplify a little bit here. So um, let's see, we've got 2 pi r squared. And then here, that will reduce, that will reduce, this will just become, so I have plus 2,000, and then I'm just going to say r to the negative 1, because that's easier to take a derivative of. So we set it equal to 0, the derivative, so I have 4 pi r plus, oh, I should say minus 2,000. Okay, minus 2,000 r, wait, so I bring it forward and subtract 1, so it's r to the negative 2, all over r squared, okay? Now, we have to solve for 0, so we got to do some algebra now, okay? So, um, first of all, since it's a rational expression, I need to make the denominators the same. So this would be 4 pi r cubed over r squared minus 2,000 over r squared, okay? So um, we get 0 equals 4 pi r cubed minus 2,000 all over r squared. Multiply both sides by r squared, so I just get 0 equals 4 pi r cubed minus 2,000, okay? So now I'm going to factor and then use a zero product property. So um, let's see, 4 pi r cubed, actually I could add 2,000, 4 pi r cubed, divide by 4 pi, so 4 goes into that, what is that, 500? over pi equals r cubed, and then take the third root. So I would use my calculator then and find that's the decimal approximation. And when the radius is equal to that number, then I would have the, I would check it then to find out if that's the least amount of material, right? So um, I would check that number, and then I would do a sign chart with that number and make sure that at that number, to be a minimum, we'd be changing from a negative to a positive. And remember, that is the value for the radius. So then I'd have to substitute that value here and find height, okay? So optimization is writing the equation in one variable 
take the derivative and set it equal to zero. Now, related rates is basically the same idea. So in related rates, we're looking at, again, rates that are related, and we want to write an equation in one variable and take the derivative. So in this problem, what are we given? We have a hot air balloon rising straight up from a level field. Okay, so I'm going to draw my little balloon. There's my balloon, and it's going straight up. Okay, and um, we have a rangefinder 500 feet away. So 500 feet away, I have some guy sitting here and watching. Okay, and um, 500 feet away from the point. At the moment, the rangefinder's elevation angle is pi fourth. So this is my angle of viewing. Okay, so this is my theta right there. Okay, and this is my guy watching. Okay, we know that when it's at pi fourth, the angle is increasing at a rate, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so what is it that we are trying to find? Well, I am trying to find how fast is the balloon rising. So if this is y, I want to find out what is the change in y in respect to time. Okay, that's what I need to find. Okay, now what am I given? Now normally I'm given another rate, and I am given that the angle is increasing at a rate of 0 0.14. So the change in theta in respect to time is increasing, so it's positive, 0.14 radians per minute. I should write my units. Okay, okay. now um, let's see. So we always have to think about, in this problem, are there any given information also that's constant and anything that is varying at the point at what I'm looking at? And I do know that the guy standing away from the balloon is a constant 500 feet. Now, what other fact am I given? This fact. The elevation angle is pi fourth. So then theta is pi fourth. True. Okay. So remember, my goal here is to write an equation and then take the derivative of it in respect to time. Now, if you look here at the original problem, I'm noticing I have a theta, and then I have opposite over adjacent, right? So what trig function would I use to write an equation? Well, it's going to be tangent. So it's tangent theta is y over 500. So if I write this in terms of y, I'd have 500 tangent theta is equal to y, okay? So the goal is to write a function and now to take the derivative in respect to time. So I'd have 500 and the derivative of tangent is secant squared theta. And now remember, I'm taking the derivative of theta in respect to time and this will be equal to dy in respect to time. So that's what I'm solving for is how quickly is that balloon rising? Now I substitute any fact that I have. Notice I've already used this fact. So now I'm going to use that theta is pi over 4. So I would go secant squared of pi 4. And then I'm also told that change in theta is 0.14. And that will equal the change in y in respect to time. So now I just use my calculator and find a decimal approximation for this. And when I do that, I get 140 dy dt. Now is that feet or is that, what is the units here? So it's feet. So it's rising 140 feet per minute. So the balloon is rising 140 feet per minute. So notice on related rates, the goal is to write a function and then take the derivative in respect to time, 140 feet. And you can find more practice problems like this in our AP folder and if you look under applications of derivatives, I have problems for related rates and optimization. Hope that helped you out some.